Some say, why even talk about slavery? That was then, and y'all can finish it. This is now. Let's just let bygones be what? Be bygones. And we, we ain't slaves no more, so what's the sense in even talking about slavery? I ain't no slave. I can go where I want to go. I can do whatever I want to do, and I can say whatever I want to say. Well, the question is, even though as a people we have the access to do whatever we want to do, go wherever we want to go, or say whatever we want to say, what are we talking about? What are we doing? Huh? And where are we going? And if, in fact, we have access to the route to go where we want to go, but we're not going nowhere, can do whatever we want to do, but we're not doing nothing to say whatever, whatever we want to say, but we're not talking about nothing, that even though our body has the freedom to express itself, something must have happened to our mind. Because if our minds was in place, then with access, we'd be going wherever we wanted to go, doing whatever we needed to do, and talking about that which would rise our people overnight. Is that right? We also say, of course, that you ain't no slave no more. That was way back in the day. But the definition of a slave proves that the modern-day so-called American Negro is more of a slave now than our ancestors were in 1555. All praise is due to Allah. The definition of a slave is one that has voluntarily submitted to a so-called superior power and has lost their power of resistance. Well, the sharks would have been following the route of the slave trade if we had not lost our power of resistance. So back on plantation days, 1555, they had to put shackles on our feet, didn't they? Yes, sir. They had to put shackles on our hand. Yes, Even a steel garter around our neck, bigger than the doorway entry. Why? Because they knew that we might run with them feet or possibly kick that slave mask. Right. They knew they might, we had to shackle the hands, but we might build with these hands or possibly fight our oppressor. Right. They had to put a garter around our neck because when the night time came, we might break away and run for freedom. Right. Is that right? Yes, so that shows that we had not lost our power of resistance. Even in the middle passage, we lost over a hundred million lives and most of them came by way of suicide. For the slave had ingrained in their heart from the motherland is either freedom or death. And I'd rather my baby be eaten up by the sharks than to be in the hells of North America and made a slave for the next 400 years. So we didn't lose our power of resistance, that's the point. And we didn't voluntarily submit ourselves to no so-called superior power in 1555. That's right. No, they bought a trading post in the jungle, is that right? Yes, sir. They put alcohol in that trading post. They served the original inhabitants strong wine and drink and defiled the temples of God. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Then they told us that they knew of a place that we could get more gold than what we were earning in our own country. Yes, we got on the ship to come to the cellar to look at the maps of this so-called place where there were more, where was more gold. The cellar shut and it never opened up until three months later after we had went 9,000 miles from Africa to the shores of America and we were made into slaves. When we got here for the first 64 years, they had to put us through the mealing process, the seasoning process, or the slave making or slave breaking process. It was a window of time carved out of history to turn a god and a goddess into a negro. It was a window of time carved out of history to turn a king and a queen into a slave. 